friends, welcome to my channel VLSI Gyan. Uh, so friends, in this session, we'll see uh, SRAM, Static Random Access Memory. So we all are aware of the memories in our computer systems. So basically in a computer system, we can see that it is primarily having two types of memories, which are internal main or primary memory and the other one is secondary memory. So secondary memories are like we have HDD, that is hard disk drive, solid state drive, then compact disk, CDs, and like USBs, pen drive and all, right? And uh, in coming to the internal memories, we have basically two types. One is ROM, read-only memory, which is a non-volatile memory. And another one is RAM, which is volatile one. So friends, let us see what is this volatile and non-volatile. So it is like non-volatile holds the information even after there is a power uh, off. Like the information is not deleted or not flashed out after the power is removed. But in volatile, the memories, the um, this kind of the memories hold the information uh, till the power is on. Once the power is off, it loses that information. So basically, it is divided into two types. One is SRAM and the other one is DRAM. SRAM stands for Static Random Access Memory and DRAM stands for Dynamic Random Access Memory. So in the market, we find different types of DRAMs like we have um, SDRAM, RDRAM, DDR, SDRAM, DDR1, DDR2, DDR3 and DDR4. So um, we all have heard about this RAMs and we are using also. But in this session, we'll be more concentrating on SRAM. So what is this SRAM? SRAM is a static random access memory. So what is its use actually? So friends, as you all know, uh, we want the operations to be very fast. Our process should process the data as early as possible. This is what is our main aim. So for that, we have a bulk of data in the main memory. And this SRAM, what it is doing is, it is bringing and it is keeping that data ready for the processor to process the particular operation. So it is like a, you have a huge um, uh, grocery in one container and every day for every, like for uh, you have a sugar of 20 kgs in a big container and you want to prepare a cup of tea. So every time you cannot take the one spoon of sugar from the, 20 kgs of container. So what you will do is you will take a simple small box of container and you will put it, uh, you will put the sugar in it like half kg or one kg and every day whenever you are preparing your tea, you can take it from that small box. So this is how the static RAM also works. So whatever the data is required, whatever the application is required, that is stored in the static RAM for that particular moment. So instead of searching from, from the taking that uh, fetching from the main memory, the static RAM keeps the data available for the processor to make the operation much more faster. So this is main function of SRAM and uh, it is like uh, it is basically used to store the data and uh, machine code. And as you all know, it is a short term memory because when the it is a volatile kind of the memory. So when there is a power that time only it can keep the data. Otherwise, the data is lost. Right. So these are all the main things about we should know about the SRAM. So coming to the block diagram, if you see here. Uh, we have a clock for this SRAM. The input data which we want to store into the SRAM is data in and the read enable and write enable or write signal or read signal and the address. So whenever the write is one, that time write operation takes place in SRAM and whenever the uh, read is one, that time you will find that the read operation is taking place. So when write operation means the data in data in input signal, the data in whatever the data is present in that is stored in the memory location. Is stored in the memory location specified by the address, right? So this is what is write operation. And what is read operation actually? Read operation is whatever the data is stored in the memory location of SRAM that is taken out and it is given to the data out. So this is what is a read and write operation 
in SRAM. Now, friends, there are two more things that we often hear when it comes to the SRAM. That is the width and the depth. Okay. So, what is this width and the depth? So, width is nothing but the number of bits it can store in a particular memory location. Now, like suppose uh, I have this data in is of 8 bits. So, 8 bits of information um, are stored in this RAM. All the RAM. Okay. So, what is then depth? Depth is nothing but how many such memory locations are present in SRAM, which can store 8 bit of information. If this is an 8 into 8 RAM, the width is 8 and the depth is 8, then each location can hold 8 bits of information and we have like that 8 in 8 memory locations. Then we can see that it is an 8 by 8 RAM, right? So friends, if I have a RAM with uh, 8 and 8 bits of uh, width and uh, depth is 64K, that means that it has 64 memory locations like this, so many memory locations, 64 memory locations, okay. And each of this memory location can hold 8 bits of information, right, starting from 0 to 63, this 64, 6335 something it will come. So up till that, uh, we have that memory location. So don't get confused with the depth and width. Width is nothing but the number of bits it can store in each memory location. And the depth is how many such memory locations we have in the RAM. So we need to, whenever we want to write a code for SRAM, so that time we need to define a register, a memory array. We need to define that time we take the depth and the width, right? So let us see how we can write a very log code for this SRAM. Uh, here I'm using now model sim for doing the same. Okay. So let's check how we can write a simple very log code for 8 by 8, 8 width and 8 depth SRAM. So friends, double click on model sim, you will get this page, click on jumpstart, click on create project, here you need to provide the name of the project. So let's, let us give SRAM1, okay, and create new file, you need to create a new file, again giving SRAM1 as the name of the file, okay, and you need to select the language. So here we will write in very long. So selecting very log, click OK. Yes, file is created. Close this one. Then you can double click on this. Editor will get open. Now let us write the code for. So always we start with module. Module SRAM one only will take. Okay. So we'll declare the inputs and the output ports. So input is. Uh, we have seen in the diagram just now, we have an input clock, right? Then we have input uh, data in. Let us take the size as 7 down to 0. Data in, right? Then again, we have another input that is write, enable or write signal. And then read. Then we have 2 down to 0. Why, friends, I'm taking here 2 down to 0 is because we have we are having the depth as 8. So for 8 memory locations, I need 3 bits of address line. Like 2 power 3 is 8. So from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, we have total 8 combinations. And these 8 combinations are used to provide the address for each memory location, right? Then we have output. Output is also 7 down to 0. And this is called data out. Right? 
Now, as I said earlier, we need to define here a memory array. So for that, I'm taking rich width. What is the width? Width is seven down to zero. So I'm taking seven down to zero is the width. Give a name. Let us take Ram only. Then the depth, zero to seven locations, right? Next, we'll write the logic. Always at pause edge of clock begin if write If write signal is present, then what will happen? Write operation will take place. Write operation means whatever the address we have specified in that particular address, our data will get stored. So RAM address will be loaded with the data in. Right? Let us close this always block and we'll take the write read operation now. So for that, I'm taking a simple assign data out is my output signal which is equal to my ram address if my read signal is one right so i have to write the condition if rd is there and it is present then it is ram and otherwise we'll assign some uh Z value a tick B right eight Zs and and module control S. Now let us compile this code. So compile all or compile selected. Yes, SRAM was successful. Now you can simulate by giving the command vsim and the name of the module. So our name of the module is SRAM1 and simply click enter. Now right click go to add to wave all items in the design or you can simply select add wave also both options will work as we have not written the test bench so we need to provide the inputs here itself so select on clock Go to clock. Here you can see offset and all is there. If you want to change, you can change or simply you can click OK. Then you have the data in, data in, select, right click, go to force, give the value, any value, 8 bit value. Let us check for the right operation first. So we'll give the right signal as one and read signal as zero. Later we'll change read signal value. Provide the address, same method, select, right click, force, and any address range. From 000 to 111, you can give. Let us take 1010. Okay. Then at the top, you have this control. Sorry, run. Click on it. Yes. You can change the data. See, data out is not coming because it is not a read operation. It's simply a write operation. You can change the data. 01010101. Click OK. Run, yes. 
we can see we can change the address also force now when you make this rd equal to 1 when read is 1 that time you will get the data out so now i'm making rd as 1 run yes you can see we are getting the data out so friends this is how we can write a simple code for sram in verilog and i have also uh, shown you how to simulate it in model sim hope you enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe and uh, if you have any queries related to vls domain, please put it in the comment box i will try to clarify it thank you for watching this video please subscribe thanks